Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video deals with predicting SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reaction mechanisms. When you're trying to predict products in organic reactions, you need to determine mechanism. And with alkyl halides, it's useful to figure out whether it's SN1, SN2, E1, or E2 mechanisms. So this slide will help us predict which mechanisms are likely to occur. The first thing I would suggest is to classify the alkyl halide substrate, the Rx species, as either methyl, primary, secondary, or tertiary. It's an easy thing to do and it can give you some useful information. It'll point you in the right direction and a lot of times help you get started. For example, SN2 reactions prefer less highly substituted Rx substrates, like methyl and primary. Other mechanisms, the SN1, the E1, and the E2, all prefer more highly substituted alkyl halide substrates. So based on substitution, you can get a sense of which types of reactions are more or less likely. Some mechanisms can also be ruled out based on substitution. For example, the SN2 reaction won't occur with tertiary alkyl halides because they're just too hindered. Another example is that E1 and E2 reactions with methyl halides just won't occur because there are no beta positions to form a double bond. Another example is that SN1 and E1 reactions are unlikely with methyl and primary alkyl halides because they produce very unstable carbocations that are difficult to form. So classifying the alkyl halide substrate can point you in the right direction. What you'll need to do next, though, is to classify the other reactant, besides the alkyl halide, the base nucleophile component, as either strong or weak. If it's a strong base and nucleophile, there are several characteristics that you'll observe. These species aggressively attack alkyl halides, and they tend to force second-order kinetics. These are the bimolecular reactions. Therefore, SN2 and E2 reactions are possible with strong bases and strong nucleophiles. If the other component is a weak base and nucleophile, these are more passive reagents and they don't attack alkyl halides directly. It's only when a carbocation forms that they attack. The carbocation forms first in a unimolecular reaction and then the weak base, weak nucleophile will attack the carbocation. This leads to SN1 and E1 reactions. Next we'll go through some examples that illustrate some of these points. Here's a reaction of an alkyl iodide and the reagent is methoxide. This is a tertiary alkyl halide so we can rule out SN2 reactions but other mechanisms like SN1, E1, and E2 are all possibilities with tertiary alkyl halides. The next thing is to classify the reagent as a strong or weak base. Methoxide is strong because there's a negatively charged oxygen. The strong base, strong nucleophile is gonna promote the E2 and SN2 type pathways. Well, we had previously discussed that tertiary alkyl halides can't undergo SN2, so you can mentally cross that option off. The only possibilities that are likely then would be the E2 reaction where the base deprotonates either this beta position or one of the equivalent beta positions in the ring, and that leads to two possible alkene products. There are no substitution reaction products that are possible here. Among these two alkene products, the major alkene would be the more highly substituted one. This would be a strategy for tackling this problem. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have an alkyl bromide reacting with an alcohol, ethanol. This alkyl bromide is secondary, and unfortunately secondary alkyl halides are quite versatile and they can undergo just about any type of reaction mechanism that we've seen. SN1, SN2, E1, E2. So we can't really narrow things down based on the substitution of the alkyl halide. What we'll do next is classify the other reagent, ethanol, and that's a weak base, weak nucleophile. This reagent will promote the E1 and SN1 type processes, and what we'll get is a mixture of substitution products and elimination products. First a carbocation would form, and then the weak nucleophile could attack to give a substitution product. The other possibility is the carbocation could get deprotonated by the base to give an alkene that's trans and an alkene that's cis. Among these two stereoisomers, the trans is more stable, so that'll be the major alkene product. This slide has a couple more examples. Here we have an alkyl chloride reacting with water. This is a secondary alkyl chloride, so this one has several possible mechanisms associated with it. Water is a weak base, weak nucleophile species, so this is going to promote E1 and SN1 type mechanisms. Now, since this alkyl chloride doesn't have any protons in either one of its beta positions, there are going to be no possible elimination products that form. We'll only get a substitution product shown here. There are no E1 elimination products because there's simply no beta protons to pluck off. Here's a reaction of an alkyl chloride reacting with hydroxide. This alkyl chloride is also secondary, so it could react theoretically by SN1, SN2, E1, E2. But hydroxide is a strong base, strong nucleophile, so that promotes the E2, SN2 type reaction products. Secondaries can undergo both SN2 and E2, and so those products are all possible. We could get a substitution product, and we could get an elimination product. 
this gives you some sense of how to predict what mechanisms are likely to happen. It's a good idea before you start jumping in to try to draw products to figure out what mechanisms are operative in a particular reaction. It influences product distribution and you need to know that to get the right answers. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.